So today we're going over the social dilemma on Netflix. Now there's a lot of things I already knew about this walking in, but let me tell you there's things that I did not know watching that. Like I knew it was addictive. I knew they're collecting information from me. I knew that it was wired. It was designed in a way that's really like getting you to stay there no matter what. Like I could just feel it. Like if you've ever used one of these apps before, Instagram, Facebook, you know, any Google, all these things, Twitter, these are addictive platforms. There's no question about it. I'm not happy when, I, when I've been on these regularly. And so in my life, I really don't use them rel religiously. I kind of just try to post these videos and get off of them as fast as I can. Try to post little things and get off. I don't try to look at Once you get stuck in the feed, you're just, it's just like game over. So we're going to talk a little bit about the movie today. And we're also going to chat about kind of what we can do about this. Like, what's the solution? And, you know, I'm, I'm going to take everything that the movie says with kind of like a grain of salt because I'm not in the industry. I don't know everything. I can't verify every single thing that in the movie was true. But they did interview really high-level people that created this stuff. So I, I'm kind of going in with the assumption that a lot of this is true. Maybe somebody's working currently at the company that could prove some of this video wrong. And that's something we should be open-minded to as well because the whole – you know, movie is about confirmation bias and about, you know, falling into these echo chambers. So even the movie itself, we should, we should, you know, weigh the options with, see if there's any other information out there as well. That said, going into the movie, they're basically talking about the information age has transformed into the disinformation age. Now what's changed, you know, like let's say from 10 years ago, the main thing that's changed they say is that there's basically these echo chambers. So there's these things happening with the recommendations of content. Okay. So the main goal of these platforms is they want to, you know, advertise to you. They want to, people pay them. They bid on advertisements to specific people and each platform is competing to have the best predictive algorithm, the best uh, predictions for what your behavior is going to be next what you're going to do next. So they gather a lot of creepy data from you to figure out how you're going to act. What are you going to do next? And they do things so crazy that they even like when you're scrolling on a page, like I bet you didn't know this. When you're scrolling on a page and you stop to look at an image for a few seconds, they record that data. I did not know that. They record that data. That's part of your avatar. And this whole avatar is set up to try to figure out what you're going to do next. And so the the company that has the best predictive model, the best avatar, it's the most accurate, gets the most money from ads and they just make the most money. So they're always looking to figure out how can we understand this person better? They create this avatar. Okay. So how does this tie into disinformation? Since the goal is to try to get you to stay on the platform with these rec with this recommended content, you know, YouTube even does this, you know, I'm guilty. Maybe this is a recommended YouTube video. I don't know. But specifically, let's say for, for Facebook or Instagram, they're trying to recommend you this content and the stuff that's going to keep you on the platform longer is stuff that you generally already agree with. You're going to read this. You're like, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And that keeps you down. Like you get into these rabbit holes and it's just these, these entire crazy rabbit holes. You just dive into it. Last, you know, sometimes you last, last hours of like watching videos or, you know, looking at content or articles about this. And so this is kind of where that stems from is the algorithm has one goal. It's to get you to stay on the platform. It does that with giving you information that conf it gives you more confirmation bias to what you're already looking for, what you're already thinking. It doesn't really give you a wealth of different opinions and ideas. Once you go down the rabbit hole, it's like, boof, you're going all the way down. So. How do you figure this out stuff out? Well, for me, I I hate social media. If I could never be on it, I would I would do it. I've had many periods in my life where I haven't been on it. Right now I'm on it because I want to share videos like this with you guys, right? That's what I said. So what you can do is you could figure out am I looking proactively for people that disagree that I would disagree with? Okay. So like a good example of this would be like intellectuals and debates. You know, Jordan Peterson and Sam Harris right? Um, you know, if you're a liberal, you should be watching some content that's hardcore conservative. You should be knowing what the hell they're talking about. So likewise, if you're conservative, you should be watching stuff that's liberal. Like this is part of the reason the, the country is so polarized right now. And actually people who are moderate are, are less moderate now. They're more 
uh, either swinging on one end or the other. In large part, this is happening because of this recommendation, this algorithm. So the companies apparently say that they there's only a few people that really know how the algorithm works in each of these companies. So it's almost like this runaway thing that's just it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's spiraling out of control, but it seems like it's it's kind of doing its own thing. This is, you know, and you can make tweaks to this, but in general, it's kind of scary. This isn't even like humans deciding or doing this. This is just like in the background happening. And so this has huge influence and power over the world. I mean, literally, uh, you know, you can influence people so easily. My biggest worry in my life is like, dude, I got to get more information uh, from the other side because basically everybody has different facts, a different set of facts. So some people are going in and they're like, I have this idea of the world because I've been fed these sources, th this, these news sources, et cetera, these articles, these videos, these posts, and everything is just getting crazy confirmation bias. And other people are doing the same thing in these other like little rabbit holes and they're getting crazy confirmation bias so that they can't even recognize the other side. They don't even understand why they would think that. And the other side's like, I don't understand why they would think that. And so now we have this huge tension right now in the country, especially in America, because of these issues. I mean, it's, it's, it's insane. And so how do we get out of that? Well, it's not going to be easy. I mean, this has also influenced journalism, right? So a lot of journalism, it used to be a lot more objective. It's hard to find like real good objective journalism that's not biased. It's like almost turned into activism now. It's like journalism isn't journalism, it's activism because one side really wants this outcome and is is criticizing these other people and the other side's criticizing these other people and there's nobody in the middle just being like, hey guys, like check this out because the, there's no clickbait for the fucking moderates. You know what I mean? There's nobody who's who's going to click on the objective uh, you know, article that weighs both sides anymore. Um, the title in it in of itself is trying to enrage you. It's trying to get you emotional. It's like, ah, and you're like, ah, let me click it and, and get it and, and read this. And, oh, and you get worked up and you get angry. And then you want to click more and you want to click more and you want to click more and it keeps you on it. And you don't know that you're getting used. You are getting taken advantage of. No question. If you're getting angry reading something and emotional reading something, you've lost the battle. It's not, it's not about these people are the bad guys. If you're, if you're in that mindset, like these people are the bad guys, it's not true. I guarantee you that if you sat down and got to know somebody a little bit better, you'd understand like, oh wow, they're actually not that different from me. And this is something that's so crazy to me because we live in such a great place right now. Like it's one of the best times to be alive in the, in the world. Yet there's so many people that are unhappy, so many opportunities, there's so many amazing things. There's so many people that aren't able to see those because they're clouded with all of these, with all this kind of destructive information, if that makes sense. So there's not anything that's out there that's really just adding to the, the general well-being because it doesn't get clicks. It doesn't get any, any attention. It doesn't keep people on these platforms. It doesn't get the money. It doesn't pay. So this is where they, they talk about in the movie about getting into like regulation. Now, I'm not a big fan of regulation. I think that the government should get its hands out of most things because it's not efficient. Have you ever been to the DMV before? Have you ever done anything through the government? It's never, ever efficient. So there's no reason that the government should have control over all this stuff. However, I do see the argument that basically these platforms have become so influential and they've become so crazy uh, with being able to even almost influence elections that having some sort of cap there with like what they're able to do, it, it kind of makes sense. I mean, I'd be open-minded to that conversation. So what can you do today to start actually fix this? Okay. How can you change this and of it yourself? Okay. So number one, and everybody thinks they have an open mind. They, they fucking don't. You don't have an open mind. Everybody thinks they have an open mind. You don't have an open mind. You only have an open mind if you're actively watching people you disagree with. Okay, so you have to go online and you got to go search for people that you think probably are terrible people. They're, they probably, they're idiots. They don't know what they're talking about. They're fanatics, whatever. You have to go search for those people and you have to just watch them. Now, that's probably hard to stomach if you're just deep, deep down the rabbit hole, let's say in the political spectrum. So what I would say is check out debates, right? So look at debates. 
Look at content that where people disagree and they're trying to hash it out. There's not enough of that. You know, Rogan does this pretty well. He has people on that, that disagree. You know, uh, there's some good ones. Jordan Peterson, Sam Harris. Uh, there's plenty of debates out there, uh, political debates. These are, and it's not just about seeing like who got the zingers in. I think that's like not, that's some people look at debates like, oh, this person won and this person lost. It not a debate should be about like uh, trying to understand the other person's view because, uh, you know, they, they have their, maybe their unique experience or whatever has contributed to how, where, why they think the way they think. There's probably something you'll learn. You know, the, the most important thing that I've figured out and I don't follow it. It's hard to follow it all the time. I have to constantly remind myself. But it's seek first to understand, uh, to be seek first to understand, then to be understood, right? Classic. This is what we're not doing right now. We're not doing this. So go figure out somebody that you don't like and go follow them, go listen to them, go check out the other side of the aisle because the way that we're moving is not the right path. I mean, it's, it's, it's not going to end well. You know, it's not good for anybody. And I think we have a lot more in common than we think. And I wouldn't be happy if I saw these systems that are in power, taking control over our thoughts and our, you know, biases, let's say, running rampant and, and dividing us as a country. So go check out somebody you disagree with and go watch it and go and try to have an open mind. And it doesn't mean you have to agree, but you seek to understand and maybe you'll get a little bit less worked up. You'll get a, bit, a little bit less angry. And you know, at the end of the day, you'll be a lot happier. Nobody's happy when they're, when they're all angry anyways. So I hope that helps like the video and subscribe. If you want more content, I'm going to be covering some dope ass shit. It's going to be freaking sick. And I look forward to the next video over and out.